Well, you know, I saw uh, Sean Lennon with his band backing up Claypool Delirium Yoko once at um, that really small club right there on Commonwealth Avenue. What is that place? The Paradise. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, they were on tour once. What's the name of his band at that time? I'm forgetting now. But I went to see them. And uh, <laughs> at one with... point, he was really hot. And in like a flash, with like effortlessness, he took this gigantic mound of long hair and just <laughs> made it a bun. It was amazing. It was very samurai. It was very zen, you know, because he's got this Japanese side of his life and everything else. And it was just like, <laughs> and all of a sudden it was a bun. It was incredible. And it was really funny because Yoko was talking and she was supposed to introduce something and you know some some other thing they were about to do and then she was going to leave the stage to let sean do it and she's like okay so thank you bye and she walks away and he goes but mom <laughs> there's this big rock and roll store but mom <laughs> oh it was adorable that is yeah i just loved him i mean when this whole thing happened that whole murder i was 20 years old there was one other person doing rock and roll at Berkeley, one other teacher, and that was John Stevens. And he's the one that studied, uh, started the John Lennon course. And it took him forever to get that John Lennon course because everything was so jazz back then. And um, they didn't give him the course until the a uh, Associated Press came to the Berkeley Contemporary Music School and said, what do you think of this horrible tragedy? And they didn't know what to do, so they said, talk to our Beatles fans and student Lauren Passarelli and this guy John Stevens. And the Associated Press is talking to us about this horrible thing. And right before that, in October 1980, John was doing his John Lennon celebration in the Performance Center, and he did a birthday on October 9th. He did a concert. It was like the second or third year in a row that he'd done that. And John because Lennon. I was a student that he knew of, I was never in any of his classes, he said, I want you to be George. So it was the first time I was playing the Berkeley Performance Center. I was 20 years old, and I'm in the Berkeley Performance Center, and uh, I'm playing Slide on Give Me Some Truth and all these great songs, and we're doing these little skits in... Uh, what are you doing? I think I was wearing this very hat. I've had this hat since I'm 15 years old. And um, it was fantastic. We were so excited. And then in November, Double Fantasy came out. So we were high as a kite. We just loved it. It was just like the greatest thing in the world to have a, a finally a new album from John Lennon. And we loved all those songs and stuff. And then this horrible thing happened. And we were just... We were just gutted, you know. We were, I was just like on the floor for three months just crying my eyes out. If I think about it too hard, I can just fall apart because it was so traumatic. I was like, what do you mean they're murdering musicians? Like, I just, I couldn't understand it, you know. And we were so worried about Sean. He was five years old, you know. We just loved him so much. And you just wanted to know, how are these boys doing, these two sons? So to hear them do that talk was just phenomenal. And everything they spoke about, I knew about. I had lived through those concerts that they were talking about or those those sessions, you know, around those albums. I was totally intimate with those albums because they came out and I devoured them. We didn't have a million things to listen to and a million distractions on YouTube. You had one album for months and you just left it on your turntable and you listened to it forever. And you That's... knew it. You got to know it, you know. And so to hear Sean and Julian talk... They love each other so much. It was just so heartwarming. It was like you were in on the family photo album. Like, I know that picture. I know that scene. You were there. That's fantastic. I knew you went to the circus. I, I knew you were there at that recording session. You know, like, so that's what you were thinking? Oh, wow. You know, like, it was just like finally filling in the pieces of what happened when we grew up. What was your life like? What was my life like? What were you doing? Oh, you know, like, it was just, it was like reminiscing with family members. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. I thought they did an incredible job, and what a pleasure and what a privilege to be in on those conversations. I was so thankful they did them, you know? Yeah, it made I agree. Me feel better. It partially healed me a little bit, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. It's just... Uh, it's You're just, so lucky you weren't on the planet when that happened, because it was so... I remember you saying that. I remember you saying so that. It's so devastating. Oh, my God. And every time... You read the history, that's part of it. I know, and every time you watch a special on John, it surprises me. Every time when it comes up, I'm going, oh, they're going to get into this oh, again. And, and if it happens unexpectedly, I burst into tears like like it just happened. Like I just, yeah. I was interviewed by a VH1 
storytellers once. Uh, it was like in the middle of uh, the park there, middle of the commons. And uh, it was about loving the Beatles and all this stuff. I don't think they ever used it. But the interviewer had no interest in the Beatles and she had no interest in an unknown person like me. It was just an assignment that she was on. And so I don't know where she just goes. So, yeah, where were you and what happened when you heard the news that John Lennon was murdered? Or So how about that, that particular uh, thing when he died? You know, I just burst into tears in the middle of this interview because I didn't expect her to talk about that. We were talking about the Beatle years, you know, and so yeah, it's probably why they didn't use it. <laughs> it's not a good subject. It just sucks. It just I just heard a thing on Instagram that Olivia Harrison had posted and said on George's birthday or around his birthday, like, you know, nobody picked up a guitar and sounded like him. Nobody had his touch. And it's like, I come so close to his touch. I loved his touch too. I have devoured it. You know, like, you should hear some of my things playing his music. You'd think it was him, you know, like, because I, I feel like I get into it that way from a love standpoint and a touch and a, a feel and the right attack and sustain and release and bend and, you know, it's like, I love those details as a recording engineer. Those are the things I live for with music. I agree. I try to give myself the same goosebumps that the original player gave me, you know? I'm trying to listen for those things like a, a recording engineer, like, how do you get that sound? It comes from your fingertips, obviously, you know? Yeah, and he'll change strings. He'll do like, he'll do like... Yeah, I remember doing some of that George Benson stuff. Like that kind of like, like all like just like. Yeah, those octaves are fun. That's how George did. That was a funny thing um, in my Beatle band. Yeah. If you hear, um, if you watch the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show on the episode where they did Please Please Me. Uh, George is doing this, of course. And it's the hook at the end. And George, no, Paul goes, uh, he sings that high note. And um, John's doing please, please me, please, please me. I had to do all three. It was like, please, please. Please me, oh yeah, like a please, please me, yeah, like a please, please me, yeah, like a please you. Mm. Ran out of breath there, but yeah, I had to do all three. I had to do the high note and the please, please me, and the blink, 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 blink. It's like, wait a minute. It took three people to do that. <laughs> why yeah. are you making me do all of them? <laughs> That's not fair. That's why there were four Beatles to split these things up, you see. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't have they couldn't have done it on their own. No way. They need each other. Oh absolutely. I don't know if I ever told you this, but one time my really cool drummer couldn't make it to one of our Beatles shows. It was a Christmas show. We were getting snowed out. The place didn't cancel the gig. The other two guys didn't want to cancel the gig. So I made my way up to Portsmouth to do this thing in this terrible snowstorm. The drummer's wife wouldn't let him go. So the keyboard player, to keep the gig, just called a friend who happened to own a drum set. <laughs> you know, he happened to play drums. He said, please come and sit down, sit in and, you know, just be our drummer tonight. The guy didn't know the intros. He didn't know the outros. <laughs> he didn't know the drum parts. He barely knew the tempos. The three of us, the three of us in the front are doing our best beat limitation as, as best we can, like we always do. And it sounded so bad. It was like Beatles GB. It was like a train wreck to me. Everybody was happy. The dance went well. We got the gig. We got paid, blah, blah, blah. But to me, it was so god awful because those drum parts weren't there. We were doing what we normally do. It does not sound like the Beatles with just any drums. It does not sound like the Beatles if you take out John Lennon guitar parts and his vocal. It doesn't sound like the Beatles if you take out Paul. It's like George, you know, had it had it right. You know, like how many Beatles does it take to 
screwing a light bulb for, you know? And Paul said the same thing, you know? It's like, we were like a car, you know, it's like four wheels to a car or a box, there's four corners or a table, four legs, you know? It's like, it took the four of them and people don't realize how important equally each one of them were until you take one part of it out of the mix and then you go, it just like falls on its face, you know? It was so intricate and so beautiful and so powerful. You saw the uh, Coliseum concert from the DC show, the very first performance. Oh, before. yeah, yeah, we watched that. Energy in that thing is phenomenal. That was a trip. Yeah. Oh, my God. 